Good morning. Today is Thursday, March 28th. My name is Teresa Baker, and I'll be I will be the moderator for today's class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video button during class. Thank you. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some members of the Honest Hearted Truth Seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. We are a Zoom class of international Honest Hearted Truth Seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of His eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The Honest Hearted Truth Seekers was established in the year 2020. Classes are held in Canada, the United States, Jamaica, England, and Zambia, and students study in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lord Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the truth original and correct and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted for the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title the, uh, that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and of his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, 
and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form may only be seen in divine visions and understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be obtained by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Excuse me. Oh, my throat was completely dry. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof to how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. The primary aims and objectives of our Bible class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religions psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn 
know and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there was no other name, given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We would like to begin today's class with the opening prayer by Dr. Joyce Van Hook. We will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen. The scripture lesson today is Genesis, the first chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Van, Deborah Van Hook. And our readers for today will be Dr. Lenore Allen and Dr. Jacqueline McCain. We may now have our prayer, please. Good morning, brother. Let us buy hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Giving honor to Yahweh, our Elohim, in Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you so much for allowing us together once again to learn more about your divine purpose, pattern, and plan. Thank you for the privilege of praise and reverence. Thank you for your ever presence, keeping us all night and waking us this morning, clothed with our right mind and the desire to serve you and you alone. Our prayer is that you will allow us to one, be kind and patient with one another as we go through today's list of what you have to show us. Allow our conduct and deportment to reflect your grace and keep our focus on your will and allow us to remember that it is you that is in charge and not us. And Father, that which you find in me that is not pleasing in your sight, my prayer is that you will bring it to my attention and move it out of the way. In the name of your only begotten son, Yahshua the Messiah, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Um, the song I'm going to sing today is like, we've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We've come to teach in the name of Yahshua. Come on, let's preach in the name of Yahshua. We've come to teach in his name. The soul is reached through his holy name. We've come to teach in the name of Yahshua. We've come to hear the true name of Yahshua. Let's give a cheer in the name of Yahshua. Hallelujah. We've come to hear his true name, bring or fear to his holy name. We've come to hear in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see in the name of Yahshua. 
spiritually in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see his true name. Look in the trees for his holy name. We've come to see the true name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua. Filling the skies with the name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in his name. Filling the skies with his holy name. We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. Yes, we've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. In the name of Yahshua. In the name of Yahshua. Okay, what was that? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. I'll be reading Genesis first chapter. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and earth, and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters, and Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light, and Elohim saw the light, that it was good, and Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And, El and Elohim said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together upon one place, uh, excuse me, unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And Elohim called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in <clears throat> itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them bear, <clears throat> excuse me, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And Elohim created great whales 
and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And Elohim made the beast of the field of the earth, excuse me. And Elohim made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said, Unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, earth, excuse me, every <clears throat> herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I've read to you Genesis first chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'd like to thank everyone for their participation this morning. And now I will turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenora Allen. Good morning, everyone. So I'm glad that we were able to assemble ourselves together once more. And I wanted to know, is there anybody who has not been to a class before? Because um, it is our desire, our joy, our happiness to share this gospel with you. So if you've never been to a class before, don't be shy. Just say, I've never been here before. And we will give you the basics as we understand them to be because this is not a place where you just want to sit down and confuse people. So I have a first time visitor. Excuse me. Oh, we have, I have a first time visitor. His name is Willie Clark. Hello. He's Mr. never on one of our classes. He heard me preach about Yahshua, but he's never sat in on a class, but he's here this morning. Well, Hello, Mr. Willie Clark. I'm very happy to see you today. And what we're Welcome, going to do. Yeah, we're happy. And what I would like to do, since we have a new person with us today, is take the time to share this information with you and What I would like to do is have Dr. Deborah Van Hook be our first speaker this morning, please. Dr. Allen, can I have a few minutes? I just read the scripture and I'll be right back. Okay, Thank you. Well, well, if you have to do that, then I would like to call on 
uh, Dr. Lucy Altman, and you can be the second speaker. Lucy said that she was not available today. Oh, she was not, just okay. She's mm -hmm. not available. Uh, can we have? Let me see who's good. Uh, Dr. Joyce Van Hook. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to our first time visitor. We are always happy to have visitors and have anyone hear this great gospel and see this vision. And you're definitely in the right place. Let us uh, first have the, uh, let us have John 5 and 39, please. John 5 and 39, ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. I'll write the scriptures down for you. Okay. Uh, now this is the Messiah talking. And when you look at your Bible, you will notice most times that if you have a red letter edition, these words are normally written in red. So this is the Messiah speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees or the people of renown in his day. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to let them know because they always uh, talked about Moses. Would you please read on Dr. McCain and read on down to uh, 46. Okay, uh, verse 40. Mm -hmm. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life, I receive my honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. Mm -hmm. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. 46. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. No. Mm -hmm. that's, that's fine, Doc. Thank you so much. Um, now, oh, yeah, and read one more. I'm sorry. Uh, verse 47, please. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Okay, once again, when I started, I, to, I told you this was the Messiah talking to the so-called bigwigs of his day. These were men of renown, men who were teachers, who were teachers of the law. And they had the scriptures all around the, the hymns of their garments and what have you. And they were always talking about Moses and what he wrote. And of course, the yeah. first five books of your Bible are, are accredited to having been written by Moses. That is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. And the next uh, 34 books, which are called the prophets, uh, they all reflect back to this five books that are written by Moses. As a matter of fact, the totality of your Bible is built on this first five books. And as you read through your Bible, you will always see when they're speaking, they're always looking back to what was written before. And it was written in accordance with the law, which was given to the Jews and the Jews only. So uh, we can... Uh, to, and by the way, you will notice once again, the first five books, they were written by, they were being accredited to having been written by Moses. Why? Because Moses was having a vision. And in order to understand anything about this gospel, it is necessary to have a vision and a revelation. So now the Messiah was telling them, I am come in my father's name. Mm -hmm. And so the father's name, first of all, 
is Yahweh. Let's get the uh, name chart, please. In order to do a proper intro introduction, we start by introducing by name. And so where do you think we got that from? We got that from our Heavenly Father. It says up here, the name and the moderation. If you heard the moderator, the moderator went into great detail to tell you that the name of the Father is Yahweh. And Yahshua was speaking to the people of his time is Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Why? Because his mission is laid down in his name. Mm -hmm. And as you go through the uh, prophets, you will see their names the, their mission was laid down in their names. And you will either see that their names ended with an A-H or an E-L. A-H meaning Yahweh, E-L meaning Elohim, which is the word or son. Elohim is a title, unlike Lord and God, but it is a divine title because it is the title that our creator chose for himself. So this is why the the name you don't when you look at when you when we introduce ourselves as a name we want a name lord and god are titles they are not names you do not put the in front of a proper name so once again going back up to what yashua said he said i am come in my father's name and you receive me not well yah and Yah, you see no similarity between Lord God and Jesus Christ. So, and once again, he said, and you receive me not. Let another come in his own name. Him you will receive. Well, the entire world has received Jesus Christ. The entire world. And not only that, the letter J is the last letter that was added to the English alphabet, and it rightly belongs behind the Z. But it was put between the K and the L to make you think it was there all the time. It was just another deception. Now, when you look at the Y, also, there are everything in the creation because every, every artist signs his creation. So our trees grow in wives, the roots grow in wives, the, we grow in wives, we have a Y right in the middle of our face. Everything that you see in the universe has a Y effect, no J's, no J, no Jesus, no Jehovah. So getting back to John, uh, the, so he, he was telling people, I'm coming in my father's name and you receive me not. Let another come in his own name and you, you will receive. And so he was saying, and, and, and I'm not going to accuse you. He said, it is Moses uh, that's going to accuse you. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Moses wrote of me. So this is why we make it a point in the school to go back to Moses. We go back to Moses because, once again, he is accredited to writing the first five books of the Bible. And so when you see that Moses was uh, born in the land of Egypt, he was born under a death decree. And every time we're looking at something, by the way, in this teaching, I have to deviate a moment. We have a tabernacle pattern. We have a pattern in operation. And this tabernacle, this the, which the moderator spoke about, this tabernacle pattern is the, the pattern of everything. This is the tabernacle pattern, and it says man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. Now, this pattern was given to Moses in a vision when he was up in the wilderness of Sinai, and Yahweh Elohim, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, he took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son 
a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. And this form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Because Yahweh is not the author of confusion, you will note on the Moses chart, if you go back up and, and get the Moses, you will note that here's Moses. You see he's in the, he's here. And it says panoramic vision of Elohim to Moses, 1490 BY, which means before the birth of Yahshua. Okay, so this is Moses having a vision. And we just read this morning's scripture, which was the, the first chapter of Genesis. When we read this morning's scripture, it told you about the days of creation. Well, Moses saw, first he saw the shape and form of a man. And it's Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. Meaning these three are one. Not three. The same one. They, and, and each one has a function. So the father, who is, is, is the, who, it, it says Yahweh is spirit, manifesting within the clouds, symbolizing eternity. There's no way that you can get outside of this cloud to look back on Yahweh, to understand who he is. So he had, in his mercy, he broke himself down. So when he is speaking to a man, you see that you have the shape and form of a man. He then transformed, he's transmuted, and he transformed himself into this intangible tabernacle, which he showed Moses. You will see here where the tabernacle is covered over because he is going to continue to disrobe himself, in other words. He's coming down from pure spirit. He's taking on shape and form. And then he is each one of these uh, charts. I mean, each one of these plates, in other words, that you see here, you see what appears to be a half man there. So he is the creation. He's the first day. He's the second day. And he comes out of this each time to show Moses that it is him and him alone all the way down here to where you you see this this tabernacle that is covered over. You see down at the end, this is the tabernacle opened up. And then where you see this man here, unclothed, you see this man fully clothed in his uh, robes of beauty and glory as John saw him on the Isle of Patmos. So what we're looking at here is you're seeing Moses and John who are seeing the same thing. Moses saw the vision going forward and John is confirming Moses' vision coming back. And if you will just look at this very carefully, you will see this looks like an eye. And we go back to the tabernacle pattern so that I can show you. Because everything is made by the pattern. You see in the in the tabernacle pattern to show how you are made in the likeness and image of him. You have here in the tabernacle pattern, you have the most holy place, the holy place, and the court roundabout. And you see the man, the tabernacle of man here in the midst. And next to that, you see man by the pattern. So we're looking at First of all, it says nothing escapes the pattern. And so what happened? Yahweh gave you your own copy first so that you can look at this and see yourself. So in other words, I'm going to go through the steps of the pattern and compare them with the man to begin with. So here in the most holy place, you have what is called, you have the veil. And you have the angels on the veil. And inside of this, you have the Ark of the Covenant. It has two archangels. It has a, what they call, it, it is sitting on a mercy seat. It's made of pure gold. And inside of this is the Ten Commandment Law. And there was a pot of manna and Aaron's rod that budded. So if we go over to the head cavity of the man, 
we would expect to see a likeness of this. So here you see the I here between the, the above the mercy seat, which he said in Leviticus 16 and 2, I will dwell. In the holy, in the most holy place above the mark, the ark of the covenant. So you see this eye. Well, you come over to your body right in the midst. Here you have your pineal gland. That eye flashed when the high priest had done everything that he was supposed to do on the day of atonement. But in your in your head cavity, you have right in the center of your brain, you have the pituitary. I mean, I, I'm sorry. You have this this eye in the middle, and this eye causes your two eyes to see as one. Also, you have the the archangels on top. The you have the motory side of your brain and the sensory side of your brain, which the the you had and and these two archangels are Michael and Gabriel. So the motory side of your brain would point to Michael, and the sensory side would point to Gabriel. Why? Because Michael was the one who went out and and did the, the job after Gabriel came and gave the message. Gabriel is the messenger. Michael is the warrior. Okay? So, and inside here, you see the Ten Commandment Law in the Ark proper here. Well, guess what? In your body, the law of your body, which is the pituitary gland, it has 10 hormones. It has three on one side and seven on the other. That is That governs the law of your body. It tells how tall, how short, how whatever it is. That is the law of your body. It governs that part of your body. Then you have here, you have the veil, which it says the second veil, and you have blue, purple, and scarlet. You have blue for impure blood, you have red for pure blood, and the purple is the iodine. And all of this is located in your neck cavity, in other words. That is the dividing veil between the most holy place and the holy place. So then we come down, and in here we see the altar of incense in the holy place we have a seven branch lampstand we have a table of showbread we'll move this over to the man in your body that that altar of incense lines up with your lungs the seven branch lampstand lines up with your a order which has seven branches the table of showbread adds to your heart. Your heart has four chambers, and around this table was a crown, and the name of a crown is called a corona. In your heart, you have a fatty tissue around your heart, and it's called the coronary. You notice that there are 12 cakes on this table. The average adult pumps 12 pints of blood. This first veil here, that is what separates your chest cavity from your abdominal cavity. And so you see right here, you can see that division there. And this also, when you breathe in and out, that causes your diaphragm to move in and out, just as these curtains did in the tabernacle. And then we come down into the court roundabout you will note that this area is opened. And it is opened because your court roundabout isn't covered up by anything but skin and muscle. So you have here, you have the, uh, the brazen laver, which contained blood and water, which the priest washed the sacrifice in. And he also washed himself in after the uh, they, there were there were there was a spigot in there, so the priest washed and also the sacrifice was washed in here. Well, right here you have your kidneys, and your kidneys contain blood and water. 
your kidneys, wash your blood. Also, in the, above the priest here, you see this cup of holy anointing oil. And the priest had to be anointed before he could officiate in the tabernacle. And whenever you see oil, you are pointing to what is called spirit or quickening. So on top of your kidneys, you have your adrenal gland. And that is the fight or the flight gland. So when you are uh, angry or you're you're afraid or what have you, this this adrenal gland kicks in. Some people have said uh, mothers have seen their children under cars and been able to pick up the car. That's 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 just the kind of rush that your body produces when these glands are in operation. Then the next thing you see. Below here is you see the altar of sacrifice. And this was after the, the um, offering was uh, uh, washed. It was put on this altar. And it was a burning going on. Well, guess what? Oh, and by the way, this, this uh, a brazen altar, it had a spigot at the bottom. You have a spigot as well at your bottom. So, in other words, to release that water. So, you have the altar of sacrifice here. It had four corners on it. And the, they put on the four points of blood on the uh, altar. After, and, and when they, they put the sacrifice on it. Well, guess what? You have in your system, you have four points of blood in your colon. And this is the colon is the ascending, the transverse, the descending, and the sigmoid colon of your altar. And in there was a constant burning going on in this altar. That fire could not go out. Well, guess what? Here in your intestines, when you take in food, and you must of necessity take in food to live, and that that burning, these the, the enzymes in here, they continually work to break down your your food, your intake, and that which nourishes your body goes one way, and the part that doesn't comes out through that sigmoid area. And if you don't eat, your body will eat you. So this mm -hmm. you cannot have a, a fire going out here. And there are many other uh vessels in this tabernacle these are just the nine major vessels but there are many other major vessels uh i mean there are many other accompanying vessels pardon me in your body pardon me that you don't know about and for instance they had they had they had snuff dishes they had pans they had buckets they had to they had shovels and things when they were cleaning out the altar well, you have these same principles going on in your body that keep your body running smoothly. Mm -hmm. Also, it says <clears throat> you have the bone structure of the man, and that represents the pillars, the boards, and the bars of the tabernacle. Why? You have long bones, round bones, and you have flat bones in your body. So these in the middle here, these are your you, these are your vitals, your head cavity, your chest cavity, and your abdominal cavity. Now, you can live without your extremities. And you have, like, your, your left and right arm, you have a hand, a lower arm, and another arm. Right and left side, right? And on the body and in, in, in your legs, you have an, a thigh, a leg, and a foot. And you got a left and right one of those. And you will note that there, that points to 12. Well, you had the 12 tribes of Israel that were camped around this tabernacle pattern here. So once again, and you will see that here on the chart. Well, again, you can live without your, extrem your extremities, but you must of necessity have that those vital parts of your body. And the children of Israel who were camped out there in the wilderness of Sinai, 
they followed a cloud. And that cloud is what is pointing to your brain. You see? And so whenever the cloud moved, the tabernacle moved. So they had to, that while they were out in the wilderness, that tabernacle was not a permanent structure. That tabernacle had to be assembled and reassembled as they moved around the uh, wilderness of Sinai. Well, your body, whenever your brain says move, your body must of necessity follow that dictate. So that is just one thing that points up to you being made in the likeness in the image of your creator. Because it said man made in the image of Elohim by the pattern of the tabernacle. And absolute, And let's go back to the uh, mosaic trek chart here. Okay, so right here I told you about that eye that was above. Uh, the mercy seat, and you can see it right here in the middle of this tabernacle down here in the wilderness, that that eye above the mercy seat right here in the dead center of the seat. Bring, yeah, right, right there in the most holy place. See that eye? Okay. That is, that is where it said in Leviticus 16 and 2, he said, that's where I will dwell when, when the, uh, and, and the high priest, by the way, he, this this tabernacle was, once again, like I told you, what Moses was given instructions to build. Because he said, let them make me a sanctuary that I might dwell among them. And he did not even leave the building of this tabernacle to just any man. Yahweh himself told Moses who to call to build the structure because he wanted it built in accordance with his specifications. And whenever Yahweh calls us to do something, he is calling us to do things according to his specifications, not the way we would have it done. So you will note right up here where you see this eye, and above the eye you see it says cloud. We'll come to the top of the chart where we were, where Moses is having this vision. Okay, now reduce. Okay, now reduce this part where it says creation by the pattern. Just just bring it in. Okay. Do you see the do you see that that looks like an eye? Can't you see that this that that looks like the two sides of the white of the eye and all this in the middle is your seeing part? Why? Because he said I will dwell above the mercy seat. So everything you see in this eye above this tabernacle pattern is what is included right here in the creation by the pattern. He is showing you everything that is created and nothing escapes the pattern. And with that, I would like to say hallelujah. I hope you've been edified, Mr. Clark. Praise Joshua. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good morning, brethren. Good morning. I would like to share and continue on with the uh, baton of this great gospel and share with you how we have been blessed as students to be called into a great teaching, a school that helps you to understand the Bible, which everyone has carried around for many years but everyone has not always understood it. And our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, was given this divine vision and revelation, which you see before you. And when he gave this vision, we it, the vision explains the Bible. And it explains Moses' vision because Mo Moses was called up and given this, this divine vision, which caused him to write the first five books of the Bible, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And those first five books explain the vision that you see before you on this first chart, this Moses chart. And on this vision, in this vision, when uh, the founder uh, 
drew out these charts. It was to make us understand that because the divine vision was given to him, divine means a straight directly from Yahweh. And yet Yahweh is pure spirit. So if Yahweh is pure spirit, there was nothing that we could detect by our five senses in our body that would make us understand something we could not see. May I please have Romans 1, 19 and 20, please. Romans 1 and 19, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh have showed it unto them. For the invisible now, things of him, Go ahead. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Now, I had that read because when we, when most of us came up, we came up through religion, through our, our parents and what they learned. And they've had us all going to churches or some sort of type of, of understanding from their, for, from their parents about religion. And this gospel separates us from the world because we have come to a place where we can prove the things that, that are around us. We are taught in this school by spirit spiritual principles, which is spirit law. And that's what this uh, vision is going to share with you as we go through the charts so that we can share with you how we were able to come up to a understanding that our founder had by divine vision and divine revelation. When we were in church, we were not encouraged to ask questions. We were in church and had all kinds of thoughts about what we were being taught, but we had no way to prove it, nor were we able to ask the pastor or whoever was over the, your church about any questions about what he was sharing with us about his interpretation of the Bible. And we, and before I have you get, may I please have um, 1 Peter 1, 19 and 20, and also have uh, Revelations 12 and 7 through 10, please. 1 Peter 1 and 19. But... 19. You want Second Peter? Please. Second Peter 1 and 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. Well, now, the, go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, I shared that scripture with you to let you know that you don't have an excuse but not knowing your creator as he really is and actually exists. The first speaker shared with you about the human body and the tabernacle, which is the key to your understanding of this great gospel and vision. And it also clearly breaks down the understanding of how the Bible is written and how man was deceived uh, because he was not told the truth and the preachers in church cannot make you understand this gospel we're sharing with you because this is by spiritual law. And we live in a spiritual age. So we come into this teaching by faith. And faith is that substance. That substance is Yahshua the Messiah, who is our savior. Revelations 12 and seven, please. Revelations 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, 
and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Eloah and the power of his Messiah. But the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses Excuse them. Me, Jackie, I only wanted through verse 10. That is verse 10, what I'm reading now. Uh, and so go ahead, continue, please. 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Eloah and the power of his Messiah. But the Excuse accused- me, Jackie, that's verse 11. I'm reading out of King James Bible, I'm sorry. Okay. okay, can we have, have verse seven through 10 read again, please? Verse 10 in the Holy Name Bible reads, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called Satan, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Yes. The Holy I, Name version. I wanted to have to stop there and have the word deceived looked up because it was going to clarify that if you don't, if the world has been deceived, we do not have the right name. So we cannot serve our creator in spirit and in truth. And this gospel, uh, this class separates us from the world because we come to you with the truth. And we come to you to share the Bible, to give you an understanding of what that is. The whole world was deceived because we were not taught about the law and the prophets, which is the first five books of the Bible, which verify the difference between being taught the end of the Bible in the so-called New Testament and the Old Testament. You have to have a foundation before you, you can get an understanding of what we're speaking about in Revelations. Okay. So okay. Deceived, deceived from the Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, it says to take or catch, to beguile away, to mislead, to delude, cheat. Okay. If you have an understanding that this, that deception was that the whole world and or the church, the preachers in church, they never received this divine vision that we have been blessed to receive. So they cannot tell you about anything but their private interpretation of what the Bible is. And so we wanted to welcome you as a visitor to come in and understand that we speak, we preach this gospel by spirit law. And that spirit law includes you because you are a part of the greater and more perfect tabernacle that you live in. And you are the tabernacle and the witness of his Blessed blood, water, and spirit. That is how he ended the law. And we are now in a spiritual age and we believe in this great gospel by faith. And we come in here and we now have learned the truth. And the first part of your Bible is about the Yehudai nation or the Jews. So you have to understand we could have never had a savior to call on name Jesus in a language that we do not speak. Excuse me, so, I have another um, definition for deceive. Would you like that? Um, a deceive, it says, cause someone to believe something that is not true, typically in order to gain some personal advantage. And it, that's, that's perfect, uh, Dr. Allen. Because again, when we were in church, we were not encouraged to ask questions. We are blessed in this school and we are encouraged to use the charts that we see because the charts are an explanation of the Bible 
that we have had all of those years, but we didn't have a spiritual understanding. And if we're living in a spiritual age, you need to have a spiritual understanding of what you've had all of your life, but did not, you read the Bible, but you didn't have an understanding of it. And if you don't have an understanding of it, then you will never have the revelation that can give your soul peace, which can save your soul. And I have, John, I'm sorry, I have a little bit more. It says, go ahead. it includes deceive oneself, to fail to admit to oneself that something is true. And then for the etymology, they have to catch, to ensnare, to cheat. Okay, all of our life, all of the things that are around us, we have never been made aware that they are the ever presence of Yahweh. We are made in the likeness and image of our creator, but we didn't have an understanding of what that meant until Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley was given this divine vision and divine revelation so that he could explain it. And Dr. Kinley came and brought us the proof. In the world, you have uh, ministers that are going about telling you about, they've never told you who sent them. We mm -hmm. are grateful in this school to be able to say that we are ministers being raised up in the knowledge and understanding of our creator. Most churches cannot tell you the name of the creator because they have not seen this great vision and had this revelation that we have all been able to share and come into a knowledge and understanding that this is life eternal. Once you know who your creator is and once you know where you're going, and once you know where you've come from, and that if we had not been blessed to come into this school and understand, if Moses had not had that vision, he would have never been able to understand or write the first five books of, or being accredited to writing the first five books of the Bible. And with him writing that, Moses had to be brought up into the mouth. He had to be shown a vision. Can I have pro um, Numbers 12 and 6, Proverbs 29 and 18? And Habakkuk 2 and 2. Numbers 12 and 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Now, Yahweh, the first speaker beautifully brought out how the importance of a name is and how when you have your, the wit greatest witness that you have in the earth plane is your body. You cannot deny yourself. And so your body is pointing to that great, uh, perfect tabernacle that is all around you. And everything you see in the creation is a manifestation of pure spirit. Because we live in an age where our senses cannot detect anything that is from spirit without having something physical to see. So spirit is matter. And matter is spirit materialized so that we can understand what we see by having a vision. And our two eyes do see as one to make mm -hmm. us understand what we see around us. And because we have this great vision and because we have this school, we have a vision of what Moses saw when he went, when he was speaking about the vision, he had to be caught up in, he had to be shown a vision in order to make his understand the writing to be clear to you, for you to understand that when you come into this school, you are now sharing the same vision that he had. And our founder was uh, sharing the vision he had. And Moses's vision at the beginning, the first five books, 
and John's vision at the end of the Bible, the last five books, they verify each other. So Dr. Kenley, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley was given this divine vision and it verifies your Bible from beginning to end. And he declared the end from the beginning. So we have to have the, the uh, Bible explained to us, but the only way to explain it is to show us something at the level we are in our understanding to be able to understand where we are in time. May I have the Moses chart? May, no, uh, may I have uh, the ages and dispensations chart, please? Would you like Proverbs 29 and 18? Please. Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Can you enlarge it for me just a little bit, uh, Dr. Allen? The ages and dispensations chart. Okay, one minute. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for being patient with me. Okay, let me see. No problem, Bob. Which part do you want blown out? Well, just make it just a little bit larger. One more time. It's, uh, but I need to be able to also see the, the top of the chart and understand that, uh, try to explain the first perfect. Okay, when I shared with you first about the war in heaven, we had to understand the very first in the realm of time. This is our ages and dispensations chart, which tells us where we are in time, which age that we're in and how the creation started. And the creation started in the realm of eternity. That was before time began. And if you understand the angelic creation came before the physical creation, then you understand where we are before time and how Genesis, the first chapter, explains the first five uh, days and also how the creation and man came in the creation and and all of the creation came in before the man, which was not created until the sixth day. So if you also look at the your, your um, ages and dispensations chart and you correlate it as well with, with the chart of, on the plan and pattern of salvation, uh, you also see the 40 plate chart, which breaks down the seven days of the week. But this chart is perfect because we have seven days in a week and seven is uh, the Messiah came in the fourth age, which is in the midst of the week. And we are the weak because we did not understand that this was a spiritual creation going on around us. And we needed to understand how we fit or how we were drawn into this great gospel to be able to understand spiritual things. Okay. Even yet, even so... Even even though we're in a physical body, we can still understand something about our creator who is pure spirit and how that pure spirit took on shape and form and how that pure spirit made the creation after its archetype, which is the original pattern of the universe. So the angelic host was created first, then the physical creation, and then we come into after... Um, Adam and Eve were in the garden and there was the, the um, disobedience of in the creation. We have the creation of, of the pattern coming down. And when you see Adam in the, when we first speak about Adam and Eve in the garden, we know that there was a commandment given that they were to be obedient to the one commandment. And when that commandment was broken, Adam and Eve were cast out of the garden. And at that point, that is the beginning of the age of time when they were cast out of the garden. Then that begin that meant that Adam, who was in perfection, 
came down to a state where he now had to work for everything that was around him. Okay, he had to now be fruitful and multiply. And that's how the commandment was, how we come from angelic to the angelic state of, of um, creation into the physical creation. The angelic creation came first when there was a disagreement in heaven that caused the angelic creation to have a division and the uh and the angel up there that decided he was going to go against Yahweh and his purpose decided to rise up against him and he was cast down that is what caused the war in heaven and how Lucifer was able to deceive one third of the angelic host. And when that angelic host fell, it fell down in, in having us understand the difference between being given a, com a commandment to be obedient and giving a commandment to be disobedient. We understand how that came down into the creation and affected the physical creation of what took place in um the war in heaven and that we needed to understand how if you don't have a vision and a revelation you have no way to prove what you're being taught in the world and man was and our families were going to church and they had no way or no one to ask and when the founder had this divine vision and revelation he came and he brought us the proof that he was sent from Yahweh these vision, these charts that you see before you are not displayed in any other place other than one of the schools that have been set up. And we're grateful to come into this teaching and understanding how we came from invisibility to visibility by the revelation or from the realm of eternity, from pure spirit into a physical creation. And we're being manifested in the world because matter is is spirit materialized. We're understanding where we came from and that, that uh, the war that took place in heaven created deception on the earth plane because man did not have a divine vision to be able to teach by. And if he was not given a divine vision or revelation, he couldn't share in the church what was given. And this divine vision and revelation, all we ask you to do is pay attention. In the church, you have to pay for them to give you religion. And this gospel, these charts, and your patience and your diligence to wanting to know your creator as he really is and actually exists can cause you to inherit eternal life. May I have John 17, one through three, please? John 17 and one, these words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Well, it was imperative that we find out who our Savior is. And the world can only give you what they have. Lord and God are titles. And if they have Lord and God, the over the, your Bible tells you over 6,700 times, you must have a name to be saved. Mm -hmm. John 17 and three tells you that you have life eternal through a knowledge. And we have been encouraged in this school to research and to ask questions. And we've, mm -hmm. been, giving, we've been given the vision which verifies what is in the Bible. We are grateful to be in here 
have the patience with each other to want to learn, to want to know, and to want to understand. And we hope that we invite you back to another one of our classes that breaks down more of these charts that we have in here, here that have given us proof that where we are is the right place to be because we have a hope in our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. We would have never had that hope had we not had the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in in the first prophet in your Bible is the in the the that is printed by the King James Version is Joshua. But we have come to know in this school that before the letter J, we didn't have a letter J in our English language before some over sick over um before six hundred years ago. We did not have that. And so if you understand that all of the time that we had the Bible, we didn't have a complete understanding because we didn't have the right name. So if Yahweh is the father, if Yahweh and, and uh, Yah is masculine and Way is feminine. And so if you understand that Yahshua is coming in the mission of he's doing the will of his father. He's come, Yahshua had to come because Yahweh is pure spirit. Elohim is the archetype pattern that explains the mission of what Yahshua will do in the flesh. And as you come back, if we have not explained it for you to understand that you have um, an understanding of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, those three are one, not a unity. I'm, I'm sorry not a trinity they are a unity and they are one and so on this chart that we have uh pictorially illustrated before you we have the tabernacle pattern which is a most holy place a holy place and a court roundabout that pattern fits the entire creation of where we are everything that is around us everything that is made is made in that three fold tabernacle configuration you have the sun the moon and the stars yes the past present and future we're teaching you from the past about what is happening in the present and where we will go in the future which is the uh spiritual reality in the body of our savior Yahshua the messiah we have the temple which was built and we have the tabernacle and the ark and we have visions. We have a picture of all of those uh, pictorially illustrated on the chart so that you can come to an understanding, but you have an understanding through the law, the prophets and the fulfillment of Yahweh's creation. And it is being broken down into a threefold manifestation to understand that the pattern of three, okay, these three compartments, they only make up one tabernacle pattern, but they fit everything in the creation. You have water, which it can come in the form of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. And in the solid state, it is the form of ice. In the liquid state, it is a, a glass of clear water, which takes on the shape and form of the container it's in. And if you heat it up, you can uh, make it into a gaseous state, which is steam. And everything in the creation fits this three threefold tabernacle pattern to make us understand we are a part of that greater and more perfect tabernacle and how everything in the creation fits the tabernacle all the way down from everything you see is matter, the proton, the neutron, and the electron, and the atom, which is the smallest particle of everything created in matter. And then you have the cell of the body, which is a nucleus, a nucleolus, and a cell body. Yet you just have one cell. So we are a witness to what is in the creation. We didn't want to give you too much information. We want to encourage you to come back with your questions. And uh, to uh, before I close, I'd like to say that the letter J, is the last letter added to the alphabet. 
So it actually comes in after the Z. And it was placed in the al alphabet behind the I to deceive you, to make you think it was there all the time. That was the point of expressing deception. And so if you're in the church and you have not been taught the truth, it's because your pastor has not been taught by divine vision and a divine revelation. So he can't sh share with you something he does not know. We preach the gospel and can and give you the witnesses in the earth plane that cannot be denied, which is your body. And your body is pointing to the most holy place, the holy place and the court roundabout, which was shared with you by the first speaker. And we certainly appreciate you. And also you can verify that the letter J was the last letter added because if you've ever traveled or you've been to the state of Washington, D.C., they have every alphabet in on their streets in that city, but they do not have a J street. So if, you, if you're in your travels and you, we encourage you to come back and we just wanted to give you a brief um, introduction to this teaching and hope that you will come back and bring your questions if you have any as we share the rest of the charts uh, in the school to make you have an understanding that this is a spiritual age and we have been given a gift and we have been able to be blessed to have now a spiritual understanding while we are still yet in the flesh. And with those few words, I'll say hallelujah. I also see a hand. Hallelujah. Dr. Harris, you had a question? No, I didn't have a question. I have a comment. Uh, I don't know if we have a third speaker. I'm not trying to speak. But I just wanted to say to Mr. Clark that uh, although uh, one of our class members, Jacqueline McCain, has invited you, know for sure hmm. that Yahshua is the one. Yahweh Elohim Yahshua is the one that has invited you and will be the teacher. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, and Thank for you. our next speaker, Thank I'd, you, like Dr. On, I'd like to call on Dr. Grayson, please. Dr. Grayson, are you here? Looks like he's here. Hmm. Okay, I, um, uh, I'm like, okay, go ahead, fine. Okay. Yeah, I have a problem with these computers. Uh, uh, I enjoyed uh, what the previous speakers was uh, speaking on uh, because this is a, a astonishing vision and revelation that was given to uh, the founder, Dr. Henry C. Kennedy. And as they said, we read uh, Isaiah, it says, uh, to the law and to the testimony, mm -hmm. they speak not according to this word, is because there's no light in them. Right. So it necessitates for one to go to the law and the prophets in order to uh, have an understanding because now we know when we read the Bible, we've been taught that uh, there was such thing as the New Testament. Now, here we are, we are proclaiming that and stating that the New Testament is not in the Bible. See, and uh, that's what we have been taught previously, that that's uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the New Testament. Now, if you read, it's got a fly leaf in your Bible, mm -hmm. which I know you're not even sure at this time, but it, everybody got a Bible. Before you get to Matthew, 
when we started reading Matthew, they say that is the New Testament of our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. That's what they got in the King James Bible. Now, we know that that's the only place, and it don't even have no scriptures. If you look at that, that page, uh, before you get to Matthew, you'll see that they say uh, there's one piece of paper in there. They said that that's the New Testament. Now, but uh, this school can show you and, and vindicate to you that <clears throat> that is not so, see? Now, because uh, we go back uh, to uh, uh, to the law and the prophets like we were instructed to do. Now, because now I think that's John 5 and 39. We read that. Okay. John 5 and 39. Ye search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. See, so now if we go back there, uh, you find out that it's testified to your Savior, as the previous speaker was, was stating, that his name is not Jesus. Now, because now... If we also go to John, I think that's five and 40, uh, uh, five, let's see here, because he said Moses wrote to him, five and 46, yes. John five and 46, for had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Right. So now we go back there and we read about Moses when, uh, God would instruct Moses to go back down to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, Moses was really the top guy, him and his brother Aaron, because they was the one that was sent down to Egypt. So now, why did you got to write about this man, Joshua? See, now, we go to the first place you get in the Bible. We always read Joshua the fourth the battle of Jericho. Mm -hmm. That's as much as we've heard about this man called Joshua. Mm -hmm. So now, if we go, say this to uh, Exodus 17 uh, chapter, if I'm not mistaken, where he said he told Joshua to go out and fight with Amalek. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sir. Uh, 17 and 8. Uh, then I guess I can go up. Yeah. 17 and 8 of Exodus. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And now, Moses. When, uh, see, when Israel, when they got out of uh, the divided, came through the divided wars of the Red Sea, now they had to fight nations in order to inherit Canaan's land. Now, one of the, uh, the nations was the Amalek. See, so now here the Amalek, they fought with Israel. So now, go ahead, we can read on. Mm -hmm. Ninth verse, and Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Elohim in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought yeah. with Amalek. Mm -hmm. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Okay, so now here we just, I'm just saying that Joshua was the one that was mm -hmm. fighting that battle. Now, this is the first uh, reading, reading that you get about Joshua. Now, we realize there's no J, so, you know, when he said Moses wrote to him, see, now, in order for them to be delivered, mm. see, that was that Joshua, see, the same one that we call Jesus, see, he's back there with Moses. So, if we go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, where it says uh, that they was baptized in the cloud, it's 10th chapter, if I'm mistaken. Um, mm -hmm. 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
first Corinthians 10 and one mm -hmm. over brethren. I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink, but they drink of that spiritual rock that led them. And that rock was the Messiah. See, so now he's, he's stating there, uh, Paul is stating there that that rock was the Messiah. So evidently he said with Moses, see, he was back there with Moses. So now this vision brings these points out is because if you actually go back there and see that when he comes through Lawrence of Virgin Mary as a savior, uh, which people call Jesus, see, if that we would know that he was back there, see, and setting up his purpose. Now, can we go to, I think it's Hebrews uh, 1 and 2, if I'm mistaken, where it said he's an author? Oh, he's the author and the finisher. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, 12 and 1, 12 and 2. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sit down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Can we start with Dr. Grayson? What was that? Can you start at the first verse, sir? Oh, yeah, sure you can. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. um, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him enjoyed the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. See, so now he is, he's, uh, he just sit down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Now, so now if he's the author and the finisher, right. you know, the author is the one that writes the book. <laughs> and then he starts the book and then he ends the book. Right. So now he's the author and the finisher. See now, uh, so what 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 is this in what is in this for us? See now, what we hear is uh for the salvation of, of mankind. See, that's why Yahshua come in so that uh he could save uh, all the ones that believe in him. See, all the way to the have, that's what you're getting from it is, is the salvation of your soul. So now, and we will go to 1 Corinthians, I think the 15th chapter, and this is why we own these, these, uh, these Zooms and uh, have classes so that uh, we will know that uh, it's not any physical things that you could do to be saved, but now it's by uh, us receiving the truth. So if we go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we can read that. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you were saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So now the gospel is the delivered. See... And, and, if, and, and if you believe that, see, that's how you are saved. See, now, so then you ask the question is, uh, what is the gospel? <coughs> the gospel, okay, you can continue to read. Um, For I delivered first of all that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Now, it says how... See, the world tells you, yeah, Jesus died. Yes, Jesus was buried. And, you know, and they'll tell you he was resurrected. Now, here Paul is saying, 
how he died according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. But he didn't just die any kind of way, you know, like the soldiers decided they wanted to stick him up there on the cross. And, you know, and, uh, you know, they hated him for all kind of reasons. But he just he just didn't die because they want to stick him up on the cross. See, right. he died according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to the scriptures, now you can see why he died in the manner that he died. Mm -hmm. So now if we go back there again with Moses, we'll find out that uh, when they're down in Egypt, could we get the uh, 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 Moses chart to show the principle of uh them being down in Egypt. See, now they down in Egypt there, and uh, see, Yahweh uh, instructs Moses to take a lamb out and hold that lamb over for four days. Then they were supposed to slay that lamb. Now they're supposed to put that, that, uh, the blood of that lamb on the lintel and the two side posts of that door, see, and uh, then they're supposed to eat that lamb, see, and now that's how they now the, the, everyone that the blood was known, the firstborn died. So now that blood is put on that door, see. Now, uh, after they put that blood on that door, see, uh, it was the night of the Passover, it was the night of the Passover and the firstborn. So now what happens is after after that night, see, it took Yahweh said he would get them three days. See that they was gonna resurrect. Say, let my people go, that they may go and serve me. So they had a three-day journey from Egypt through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Now we want to show how, see, now when Yahshua come in, they call on the cross, they go over there. See, now he's on the cross. See, now he's fulfilling. That's that's his, that's what he come in to do. It's fulfill those things that was in the law and the prophet. So now here he is. When he comes in, he said, I am the door. Now see, now in Egypt they had a door. See? Now see, and then uh John at 129, I think you can read that. Okay. John 129. The next the next day, John said, Yahshua coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, see, now John is calling him a lamb. So, uh, just like in Egypt, they took the blood of that lamb and put it on the door. Now, here's Yahshua. He's the door. Not only he's the door, he also is the lamb. So, John calls him a lamb. Here's a man walking on two feet and he ain't got no four foot, foot like no no lamb but see that's why this teacher show you a principles of where you can understand that these things are laid down so when he come in see we'll know what he's doing now we know that the children of Israel uh after that death of that Passover lamb see they was buried or uh, baptized in that Red Sea See, and then uh, after that, see, they resurrected into the wilderness. And they spent 40 days, 40, uh, 40 years in this wilderness. Now you look at Yahshua Messiah. See, now he crucified. See, they buried him in Joseph's new tomb. So the lamb in Egypt, it was the death of that lamb. Then they actually uh, buried that lamb inside of them. See, and I, uh, and then also see uh, that that lamb. See that uh, they resurrect him goes into the wilderness. So now Yahshua, he is that true lamb. See, and he's a, he's a going through a death. Then they buried him in Joseph's new tomb. See, and three days. See after that. See he resurrect. Now we also got the principle here with Yahshua being baptized by John the Baptist, see? Now that's the principle of a death, see, with Yahshua. Cause now John said, behold the lamb of Yahweh. So John is predicting that Yahshua is going to die. Why would he be a lamb? See, that's what was used for sacrifices was a lamb. So now he said, behold the lamb of Yahweh. So so he's 
predicting or stating that Yahshua was going to be the one that give up his life, just like that lamb in Egypt had to give up its life. So then uh, we realize John is baptizing Yahshua in the River Jordan. So go over to John. Uh -huh. Right. So here Yahshua, he's getting baptized. See? And then it says that uh, uh, a dove descended on him which shows forth the principle of the Spirit. See, and then after that, uh, Yahshua goes into the wilderness and he stays in that wilderness for 40 days. Now, why is he staying there 40 days? Why couldn't he stay in there 50 or 60 days or 20 days or 10 days? He got to stay in there for 40 days, fulfilling a principle of the children of Israel being in the wilderness for 40 years. See? So now, these principles showing that Yahshua's not doing things haphazardly. He chose it. He had to do it for uh, take 40 days. Now, see, now Paul is saying that you are saved if you keep in remembrance. Can we go back to 1 Corinthians 15 chapter again? <laughs> Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, where also you have received and wherein you stand, mm -hmm. but which also you are saved, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How? That Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again according, according again, to the third day, according, according to, the to the scriptures. Right. Now he meant that when he said it, you know, so so he he's not just dying anyways, he's dying according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, could we go to Matthew uh 24 and 14. Thanks, Matthew 24. Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. See, now, this gospel shall be preached to all the world for a witness. That don't mean, it mean it's preached for a witness. That don't mean that everybody's going to believe it. What it's preached for mm. is preached for a witness. See, so now, uh, and this is the same gospel we read in First uh, Corinthians. So I declare <laughs> unto you the gospel. Mm -hmm. See, now, so let's go to Luke. I think 18 and 31. Then we have Luke 18 31. Mm -hmm. That the saying Yahshua might be fulfilled, which he speaks, signifying what death he should die. Is that what you want? Luke. Yes. Uh -huh. You got John 18 and 31. So what is it? Luke. 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 Then he took on to him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things which are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and he shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spitted on and they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third now, see, now, day he, he shall he, rise again. See, now what he's doing is he's telling them, see, what he got to go through. See, mm -hmm. now, but now the point is, see, uh, you go, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you can read on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So did you want this 33 and they shall scourge yes, uh -huh. him yes, uh -huh. and put him to death? And the third day he shall rise again. Mm -hmm. And they understood none of these sayings, and this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. See, now Yahshua was telling them about what's going to happen to him. Right. He said, they're going you know, they to uh, scourge him. They're going to spit on him. Yeah. And, and, they, and they're going to put him to death. Mm -hmm. And the third day he shall rise again. 
Mm -hmm. So he's telling them what's going to happen to him. See, and uh, they didn't understand nothing of what he was talking about. Yeah. See, now, the point is, see, now, if they knew that the scriptures testified of him, that's why he told them they wanted to know what he was doing. Right. He said, Search the scriptures. See, because, see, in them, you think you got with the scriptures out there to testify of me. So mm -hmm. now, if he's going to go through a death, and then they're going to uh, uh, spit on him, see, all these things they're going to do to him, see, the scriptures have already uh, uh had, had, foretold, uh, had predicted that these things were going to happen to him. Mm -hmm. But with the disciples, they didn't understand nothing. They was walking around with him, but they didn't understand what he was talking about. Right. See, now we go to Luke 24 and 47, I think, uh, what, uh, 44, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Luke 24, 44. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, thus it is written and thus it behooved Yahshua to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Keep going. Yeah. And that re repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. Okay, uh, hold it right there, uh, Lenore. Could we go up where he said, oh, fool, I think that's in the same chapter. Uh, 27. 27. Mm -hmm. 27, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 27, 44. 25, I'm sorry. Uh, then said he unto them, oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and, and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Right. Okay. So he's telling them old fools are so apart. See what I'm saying is because he's been telling them all the time. Yeah. And that's what was he come into the world. He come in to, to uh to take away uh, the old covenant and to establish a new covenant. That's uh -huh. why we got in Jeremiah. I don't know, have you read that? Uh, could we read that? Did we read Jeremiah 31 to 31? We haven't read it yet. Okay. Very, doing very good. Jeremiah 31, 31. Mm -hmm. Behold the days come, saith Yahweh. Now it's not I Jeremiah. See, he's not stating that on his own. See, Yahweh is, is speaking through Jeremiah. Said, Behold the day come and said, it don't say Jeremiah. See, Yahweh speaking through, or the creator speaking through Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. See, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Well, mm -hmm. why? Because we realize that. Well, uh, when they went on the Canaan land, see, there, there was a separation between uh, 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 Solomon's sons. So he had to bring them back together. See, now, in other words, see, uh, it said, not according to the, okay, you can read, I'm sorry, 32, okay. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Now, he was a husband unto uh, to them. And, uh, you know, uh, this is another scripture that said, your maker is your husband. See, and he was back there with them. See, and uh, he said he's not going to make this covenant like the one that they broke. Because, see, in other words, see, uh, now what he did is he, he gave them commandments and they broke those, those commandments. Because just like Adam and Eve, when he gave them that commandment, see, they broke the commandment, thou shalt not touch the heat. Here, he gave the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. And before Moses come down from the mount with the commandments, Moses throws these commandments down and break them because not that Moses broke the law, but what he broke, he broke, he broke those tables of stone that the law was written on, which is evident that the children of Israel broke that law See, and then what he tell Moses to come up and he was going to get right up on uh, uh, 
table of stone, see another, a same law, but this one he was going to put in the Ark of the Covenant, which represent him putting, this is what Jeremiah is saying, that he's going to put the new covenant, see, write it, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead, the 30, 33rd verse, could you read that? I'm sorry. 33. Keep going. Uh -huh. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their heart and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Now this law, see, is not uh, written, see, on tables of stone. It's not going to be according to the old law. But mm -hmm. see, this one is going to be written, see, in the heart and in the mind and how it's been done it's done by the preaching of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And your understanding, just like we, we read the disciples, they didn't understand nothing he was telling them uh, about him going through a death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. but after the day of Pentecost, see, and then uh, he had to open their understanding up that they would understand that that's what he was doing. He was getting rid of the old law. In other words, he, he said, uh, no, nothing shall pass from the law. Uh, see, to all be fulfilled. That means everything that was back there in the Old Testament, see, he had to remove those things in order to bring in a New Testament. And that's mm -hmm. what, after his death, burial, and resurrection, if that's that new covenant, see, and he ascended to heaven, and 10 days later was the day of Pentecost. And then we realized that the day of Pentecost, see, the Jews, the apostles, they had to spread this gospel. He said, go in into all the world and preach yeah. the gospel. See, and that's how uh, the Gentiles was able to come in because of uh, they believe in the gospel. They believe in that Yahshua, see, that not, not even no foot washing and Lord's suppers and all these kind of ordinances that the world is trying to tell us we got to do. See, he moved those things out the way. Because mm -hmm. he was baptized, see, so that you ain't got to be baptized. You right. see, he ate the last Passover supper so that you don't have to be concerned with eating no Passover supper. Right. Now, I'm going to read one more scripture. I think that's First Timothy 3 and 16. And I got a card. Okay, you got two minutes. Okay. Let's <laughs> First Timothy. First Timothy 3 and 16. Mm -hmm. And without controversy. See, there's no argument about it, whether you want to argue it or not. But see, now, <laughs> uh, they realize it. See, without controversy, see, said Drake. Mm -hmm. is the mystery of Yah of holiness. See, ain't no itty-bitty, itty-bitty thing. See, Yahweh and his, and his purpose is a mystery. And this is like an itty bitty purpose, and he has to really open it up, and uh, for us to understand it, it's a great mystery. See mm -hmm. how the, uh, the the creator, the one that created heavens and earth, see was walking around in a body, see, and moving those things he gave to the children of Israel, see, and moving them out the way, see, and now bringing us into the spirit. See, so uh, you can read that, and uh, that'd be 16 verse, okay? And without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. Yahweh was manifested in the flesh, mm -hmm. justified in the spirit, mm -hmm. seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. See, now he justified, did he say he was justified in the spirit? So now we know ourselves that the man is basically spirit, soul, and body. See, and that's what Yahshua, that's that part of Yahweh of you, that spirit that he wanted, he's taken back uh, if we are in his body. See, that's the that spirit part of him that uh, that's in us. And we just not a body, we we spirit, soul, and body. And with those words, uh, praise be to Yahshua. If anything we understand, thanks for being with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah. We'd like to thank everyone that came out to study with us today.
We held classes Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m. in Malaysia, and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. And we have a Brooklyn class from 7 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. Mondays and Thursdays, Eastern Standard Time. I'm sorry, it's 7.30 to 9. 7.30 to 9? Yeah, Monday and Thursday. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. May we all stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the Book of Jews from the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, Yahshua the Messiah our Sovereign, be along glory and majesty, dominion and power, both be up before all time and now and ever. Let us all say together, Hallelujah. 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 Mr. Clark, Hallelujah. Mr. Clark, did you have any questions? Yeah.